Sutra, extend this until it reaches to the world systems of the ten directions. The limits of all those living beings' various different minds can be known, but no one is able to know the limit of the merit and virtue of the good rules of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi only for the sake of knowing those living beings' minds. It is not For it is for the sake of knowing to the exhaustion of the Dharma realm and the riches of space, the various minds of boundless living beings up to and including wishing to exhaustively know the net of all minds that he brings for the mind of Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who within a single thought moment can know the various uh, different kinds of living beings in countless world systems in the East. Extend this until the limits of the various different karma of the living beings in the ten directions can be known, but of the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, the limit of his gurus cannot be known. Commentary Extend this until it reaches to the world systems of the ten directions. If you want to speak about it extensively, this analogy includes the other world systems of the ten directions. The limits of all those living beings' various different minds can be known. It is possible to know their limits, but no one is able to know the limit of their merit and virtue of the good rules of the Bodhisattva who first bring forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. There is no person who can know their limit. Why is this? What is the reason for this disciple of the Buddha? The Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. The Bodhisattva has no fixed dharma. He brings forth the sake of knowing those living beings' minds. It is for the sake of knowing to the exhaustion of the Dharma realm, that is, exhausting all Dharma realms and the riches of space, the various minds of boundless living beings, up to and including wishing to exhaustively know the net of all minds, that he brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. Disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, Take this analogy and put it to the side. Suppose there is a person, suppose there is such a person who within a single thought moment can know the various different kinds of living beings in countless world systems in the East. With regard to all those different kinds of living beings, he knows their different karmic retributions. Extend this until the limits of the various different karma of the living beings in the ten direct, uh, in the ten different karma of the living beings in the ten directions can be known. It is possible to know their limits, but of uh, the Bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi, the limit of his gurus cannot be known. Sutra, why is this? Disciple of the Buddha. The Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi, only for the sake of knowing those living beings' karma, but because he desires to totally know the karma of all the living beings of the three Buddhas of time, up to and including wishing to totally know the net of all karma. Disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, suppose there is a person who is in a single thought moment, is able to know the various afflictions of all the living beings in countless world systems in the East. In thought after thought, he does so, exhaust, exhausting a Samkhya compass. There is no one who is able to know the limit of those various afflictions. And suppose there is a second person who, within a single thought moment, is able to know all the different afflictions of the living beings which the previous person knew in a Samkhya compass. He also does so to the exhaustion of a Samkhya compass.
in succession extend this until it reaches the tenth person. In the south, west, and north, the four intermediaries above and below it is also like this. Commentary: Why is this? What is the reason that one is unable to know the limits of the merit and virtue of the Bodhisattva who has brought forth the mind? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. He doesn't have a fixed limit. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambuddhi, only for the sake of knowing those living beings karma. And because he desires to totally know the karma of all the living beings of the three periods of time, up to and including wishing to totally know the nets of all karma. Disciple of the Buddha, putting this analogy aside, take this analogy and put it to the side. Don't speak of it. Suppose there is a person who, in a single thought moment, the briefest interlude, is able to know the various afflictions of all the living beings in countless world systems in the East. That is, there are various greed, anger, stupidity, ignorance, and afflictions. And in thought, he does so, exhausting a Samkhya compass. In thought after thought, he just like this. There is no one who is able to know the limit of those various different afflictions. There is no person who is able to know the limit of all their different kinds of afflictions. And suppose there is a second person who, within a single thought moment, he also, within a single thought moment, is able to know all of the different afflictions of the living beings which the previous person knew in a Samkhya compass such a long time. He also does so to the exhaustion of a Samkhya compass in succession, extend this until it reaches a four intermediaries above and below. It is also like this. Sutra. Disciple of the Buddha, the limit of the different afflictions of these living beings in the ten directions can be known, but the limits of the gurus of the Bodhisattva, who first brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, cannot be known. Commentary Disciple of the Buddha, Dharma Wisdom, again calls out the limits of the different afflictions of these living beings in the ten directions can be known. Each living being has its own kind of affliction. Living beings are immeasurable and limitless, and their afflictions are of many kinds are also immeasurable and limitless. Also, they have these many afflictions. One can know their limits. You can know the extent of their afflictions. But the limits of gurus of the bodhisattva who first brings forth the mind for Nusara Samyak Sambodhi cannot be known. With regard to one who first resolved his mind on unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment, how much are his gurus and what are their limits? This cannot be known. Sutra, why is this? Disciple of the Buddha, the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi only for the sake of knowing the afflictions of the living beings in those world systems. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi in order to exhaustively know the different afflictions of all living beings in all world systems. That is to say, it is because he desires to exhaustively know their light afflictions, heavy afflictions, afflictions of sleep, afflictions of arisal of all living beings limitless, afflictions including their various differences and various awarenesses and contemplations and to cause them to purify all their defilements. It is because he desires to exhaustively know their afflictions which rely on ignorance the afflictions that interact with love and to cut off the knot of the afflictions of all destinies. Commentary Why is this? What is the reason for this? Disciple of the Buddha, you should be attentive and I will tell you now. It's because the Bodhisattva has no uniform limit. The Bodhisattva does not have a fixed drama or a fixed limit. He brings forth the mind for Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi, 
only for the sake of knowing the efficiency of the living beings in those world system. He just wants to know the efficiency of that many living beings in that many world systems. There are eighty-four thousand afflictions. Generally speaking, they are not outside of greed, hatred, and stupidity. If you have greed, it cannot be satisfied. If you have greed and you do not obtain what you want, you will have affliction. If you obtain obtain what you want but then lose it, you will also have affliction. There is a saying: When you haven't obtained it, you wish to have it. And when you already have it, you fear that you will lose it. All of these are afflictions, and there is the affliction of anger. If you are greedy and you get something that you want, you are happy. But if you don't get what you want, you become angry. If things don't go along as you wish, you get angry. You are unable to be patient, and once you get angry, all of your merit and virtue is burned and destroyed. So it is said. A thousand days of chopping firewood is burned up with a single fire. If you take the firewood which you have chopped for a thousand days and put which you have chopped for a thousand days and put it all together and set it on single fire, it can all be burned up and destroyed. So it is said, a spark of fire can burn up a forest of merit and virtue. The affliction of stupidity is confusion and ignorance. Thoughts of love are produced from ignorance. Why do you love? Because you want to have enjoyment and pleasure. After you have enjoyment and pleasure, you give rise to a heart of love. When you have a heart of love, you want to make things your own. You want to obtain them. After you obtain them, you want to make them your own. This is a function of ignorance. Each living being has its own different ignorance and affliction. Because the Bodhisattva wishes to know all the various types of ignorance and afflictions, he brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi. He brings forth the mind for Nuttara Samyak Sambodhi in order to exhaustively know the different afflictions of all living beings in all world systems. The Bodhisattva wants to bring forth the mind for. Unsurpassed right and equal enlightenment, in order to know the source of all living beings' afflictions. That is to say, it is because he desires to exhaustively know their light afflictions, heavy afflictions, afflictions of sleep, afflictions of arisal of all living beings' limitless afflictions, including their various differences and various awarenesses and contemplations. And to cause them to purify all of their defilements. What does the Bodhisattva wish to know? He desires to exhaustively know living beings light afflictions. Light afflictions are just the kind of afflictions which are not very heavy. You will find a detailed and clear explanation on light and heavy afflictions on in the Shastra on the door to understanding. The one hundred dharmas. Heavy afflictions are extremely grave and oppressive. Afflictions of sleep. This refers to seeds of afflictions that lie dormant within the eight consciousness. There are also the afflictions of arisal. This refers to the production of all afflictions. All living beings, the meatless afflictions, means they are endless. And so it is said that afflictions are eighty-four thousand in number. Beings have various discriminations and differences, and various awarenesses and contemplations. They have all kinds of awareness and contemplations. The Bodhisattva wants to purify them, which means he wishes to turn their afflictions into body. Defilements are the afflictions of defilements. These are impure acts such as killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, and taking intoxicants. These are all defilements. It is because he desires to exhaustively know their afflictions, which rely on ignorance. Also, the Bodhisattva desires to exhaustively know, to completely know afflictions which rely on ignorance. This refers to afflictions which arise from doors of co-production. Of the twelve links, ignorance conditions activity. Activity conditions consciousnesses. Consciousness, 
consciousness conditions name and form name and form condition the six entrances the six entrances condition and contact contact conditions feeling feeling conditions love love conditions grasping grasping conditions existence existence conditions birth birth conditions old age and death the Bodhisattva also wishes to understand clearly the afflictions that interact with love and to cut off the knot of the afflictions of all destinies. He wants to cut all states of existences. The 25 states of existence in the triple realm, which are knots of afflictions. Afflictions tie living beings up so they are unable to obtain liberation. So, the Bodhisattva wishes to cut off all their afflictions.